I am here with Emma Anderson, presidential candidate for the QMU. Can you tell me about yourself and your manifesto? Uh, yes, as you said, my name is Emma. I'm a fourth year zoology student. Um, I've been on board at the QM for, well, this would be my fourth year, um, and I'm really excited to be running for the position of president. Um, it's something that I've been aiming towards for, a, for quite a while, um, especially as I've been doing honorary secretary this year, so I've been working very closely with the current president. But there are still a lot of things that I feel the QM can improve upon, especially in my position as OnSec, I've been able to, to see those, those improvements that can be made. And I'm looking forward to running on a manifesto that's based on changing the aspects of the, the business side um, of the union, also the kind of student activism side, which is very important to me. Um, and running kind of on a platform of bettering kind of communication with the student body and improving the services that we have to offer. Brilliant. In your manifesto, um, you talk about, about SWOT analysis, SWOT, and you talk about um, the staff units you've done this year. What do you can you explain these a bit and explain what you, you mean to do as president? Yeah, of course. Um, I think, as I've said in my manifesto, the kind of the positions on the board of management are under constant review because we have such a high turnover of student officers. There's constant updates being made to these and it allows us as a board to more efficiently perform the roles that we do. But very little has been done on the um, business and kind of management side to update the remits of the staff in line with these new updated remits of, of the board members. Um, this is particularly apparent because we have had staff members who have been around for an awful long time um, and an awful lot of their remits haven't really changed, so it does lead to some confusion um, that these remits are not being changed in alignment with the board. So what I would like to do is have a look at the kind of bare bones of the structure of how the staff operate and make sure that that is working as efficiently as possible with the student side. Um, so looking at the events department um, would in particular be my first kind of port of call. Look at what the, the staff of the events department are, are actually supposed to be doing according to their remits and just kind of checking that that is in alignment with what our events student side are doing so that there is a more effective communication, more efficient division of labour so that everybody kind of knows their, their roles as part of the events process. Um, SWOT analyses as well, I've mentioned, um, we've had a couple of SWOT analyses already done on different departments of the building, uh, the catering department and the events department. They're incredibly good at identifying our strengths and weaknesses and already based off of those, we've been able to look at the business plan of those two departments and kind of work out how we can make that more efficient, how we can make that more effective for the students. And I would like to carry that through to look at the different parts of our, our services that we offer. So looking at the shop, um, looking at the kind of behind the scenes sides of what we do, looking at the bars and just making sure that everything that we do is as efficient as possible and whether there are any tricks that we're kind of missing that would improve the services that we can offer to the students. Brilliant. Um, in your manifesto you talk about a large online presence. Now a large online presence has been promised by both board members and budding executives in the past. How do you plan on increasing the online uh, presence of the QMU in a concrete way? I think the main problem that we suffer with at the moment is an inconsistency with our online presence. We have um, four, well, four or five conveners, depending on um, whether you count the um, convener of the current student representatives um, and the three executives. And we also have um, the events manager and the general manager, all of whom have access to our you know, Facebook communications, our Twitter and Instagram communications. And where this is great from a kind of promotional side, everybody who has an area of expertise within the building is allowed to show that off on social media and promote that, it does lead to a very inconsistent voice. And I think that that can be difficult for somebody who isn't directly involved with the QM to look at and engage with. Um, because you are getting communications in so many different styles from so many different types of people. Um, ideally, what I would like to do was would be to centralise that role to, to one person or to a number of people, but more heavily structure the role so that a consistent voice is outgoing, that the students can kind of identify with and engage with and will feel more comfortable responding to, because they'll know the voice of the QMU and that will be a kind of familiar presence that they'll be able to interact with. 
I also think one of our biggest problems is that our um, website is just not up to scratch. It, it has been identified in the past. It's very difficult to change because it is um, financially quite a big commitment to put into a professional website and we would want to be able to identify exactly what we would want to use it for and how that would better affect our, our business side and our union side and what we can offer students um, before we do make that kind of financial commitment to it. But, and so what I would want to do therefore is to look at what, exactly what we could use in a, a website for, how best we could use that website and then put forward a financial proposal which will hopefully be, be taken up if we, can, if we can show how well it will help us as a union. Okay, great. Um, during your time on board, you saw the continual decline and then the end of MAGIC, QU's regular club night. How can members trust you to run the union when you can't ensure the continuation of the club night? Right, that's a good question. Um, the club night is something that is the last in a very kind of long line of issues and problems that we've had. Um, the problems with Magic date back to before Magic even started, before Cheesy started, and it's, it's all to do, I think, with how students spend their money now, how the, the amount of financial resources that students have, which is ever decreasing due to you know, the government increase in tuition fees, cuts to maintenance grants, things like this. Um, it's very difficult, therefore, to rely on students to come out weekly to a club night when financially they can't support that continued commitment to that to that club night. Um, so I think we have we're in a a very good a unique position at the moment where we don't have um, a strict calendar of events. We can go anywhere we like from here. And personally, I would like to see us go for a monthly club night, focus on things that we have a venue that is suitable for. So a lot more kind of live music, live performance, a lot more cultural aspects that aren't done as much across campus. So theatre shows and conventions and art exhibitions, like that kind of thing that will suit our venue and our purpose. But I think that um, a weekly club night just for us isn't sustainable and we need to kind of think outside the box and deliver something different rather than trying again to do something that we know is probably going to be a recipe for failure. Great. Um, what is the current personality and the reputation of the union and what would you like it to be? I think the personality of the union is the result of the personality that we've had in the past. I think, and what I mean by that is, over the past few years we have tried to diversify and diversify to attract as wide a group of people as possible. And I think in doing that, we've lost um, a lot of the kind of heart and soul of the union. Um, we used to be very forward thinking in terms of you know, social justice, you know, we were the feminist union before that was an accepted ideology. Um, we were the LGBTQ safe space before that was legally accepted. Um, and we were kind of pioneers of that form of social justice. And I think over the past few years, in an effort to appeal to as many people as possible, we've kind of lost that, that kind of spark. Um, and I think we need to get that back. I think there's still an awful lot that we can fight for. I think as a union, well, unions in general across the country, I think, have lost the kind of, you know, picket line standing up for the, the students that they represent angle and have pretty much become the kind of British answer to fraternities, like cheap booze and slightly relaxed morals and, and, and nothing really more than that. And I think that that's perfectly fine, but I think we do also need to be balancing that with activism and pushing for, for students' beliefs. And I think we should be you know, standing with junior doctors. I think we should be standing up to the kind of, well, the university and the greater kind of governmental cuts um, to student kind of social life and the um, graduate attributes that we offer. And these kind of things are really important. So I think that our, personali our personality should be one that is defiant and student-led and someone, well, a personality that's not willing to kind of back down from what it believes in. We should be standing up and, and saying that, you know, this is our voice and we're going to lend it to the student cause. 
could that activism not um, clash with the SRC, whose main purpose is meant to be to stand up to the university? I think um, the SRC do an excellent job at what they do. Um, I think, but I think a lot more of the focus of the SRC is now as much representing the university to the students as it is representing the students to the university. There are levels of bureaucracy that the SRC have to go through that neither of the unions have to go through. So I think, in a way, their closeness with the university makes it a lot more difficult and a lot more kind of risky for them to, to sometimes push the kind of harder line. Um, so I think that working working with the SRC and working with the contacts that they have and collaborating with them is very important for us. But I think given the slightly more detached nature of the union, um, we should be able to stand up on our own with our own independent voice and and to talk about the things that really need to be talked about. Um, we've heard your presence on the executive possibly has not been enough. For example, you were away for some period during the Fresh Sweet Committee. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you believe this to be true and do you believe it's an example to be set? Um, I believe that it wasn't ideal. It wasn't an ideal situation. Um, to be away for, for a lot of the summer. But um, it did give me an awful lot of um, external kind of viewpoints. It was, it, was good, it was good for me to be away. I really enjoyed my time. I think it, was also, it also proved the strength of an executive that even when I was you know, in a different country, the, the communication between the three of us was still good enough. They were still, Celia and Max have been an incredible support to me throughout my time on, on SEC. They were still able to um, step up when I wasn't there, as, as I have done in periods of their absence. Um, so it was a really good opportunity, I think, for us to kind of work, give them the different, the difficult circumstances. It was, it was a good opportunity for us to kind of work on that communication and, and be able to, to put on a hell of a good week, regardless of that of that disadvantage. Um, I don't think, I wouldn't recommend it for any future on sex coming in, but I would say that given that it worked for our year, there is you know, flexibility in the roles and um, as long as you have a good executive team who are prepared to kind of step up and support each other, then that kind of thing is perfectly possible.